to Sean and Ken with TES Savvy. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to present. This is uh, Sean Mulholland, and my co-presenter is Ken Erickson. He'll uh, jump in in the middle a little bit. Um, so the title of our paper is Advances in Applying a Model-Based Modular Open Systems Approach, or MIMOSA for short, to Hardware and Software Verification and Conformance. Okay, so we'll talk just a little bit, very briefly, since these are short uh, uh, presentations, about the promise of MOSA. Um, some of the primary challenges of MOSA is it applies to verification and conformance. And uh, then, you know, methods to mitigate those challenges, of course, and then uh, some of the past projects that uh, actually Stephen Seamey talked a little bit about that uh, in an earlier presentation, if you were on that, we'll present. Okay. So, of course, what is the most of promise? It's, it's really about utilizing the best of breed technologies and, and taking these uh, disparate or the divide and conquer approach, right, to building a system uh, and pulling from these different uh, uh, components, integrating those and, and being able to uh, deploy that system. Now, what can it do? Well, it helps us build a more complex, uh, functional, capable system, right? So the idea is uh, we can bring these best of breed technologies together and, and enhance our overall system capability. Now, the other promise about it is a reduced cost and, and hopefully a reduced schedule. Now, one of the uh, interesting problems is there is a certain complexity that arises from that and the disparate systems. When you get to specify every single piece of a component, you can really make sure that the integration uh, points are simpler. But uh, when, when you specify or you purchase uh, different existing components, then you have some complications there. <clears throat> okay, so part of this, when we, when we look at the different technologies that are currently out there uh, that we would apply uh, MOSA uh, to or utilize for MOSA, they are, uh, what we see is uh, Air Force's SOSA, there's the Navy's efforts on host, of which we uh, did a phase uh, two SIVR, SBIR, uh, for doing a conformance verification for the host hardware standard. Um, then there's a CMOS, which, you know, we also applied, uh, well, the, we looked at as part of our requirements set, as well as SOSA, and then FACE which uh, TES and TS Savvy have been a big part of FACE for a long time as well, and we do participate in all these. But just so you know, you know, we are part of all of these standards efforts. Now, okay, so, you know, one of the interesting things, and I thought this was somewhat compelling, this graphic from uh, GTRI, and uh, uh, thanks to them, it uh, really looks at the different uh, upgrade iterations that we have in terms of your aircraft, how it upgrades uh, every uh, X number of years, There's, and then applied to enclosures, your uh, faceplates, the changes that you have on those, and what those upgrade cycles are versus your processing or your SBC. Uh, the idea is those happen quite frequently, and then the graphics cards happen uh, much less often. So one of the real challenges you run into is you have these different upgrade cycles of technology, and, and when you look at software, it's even, uh, of course, we upgrade the software uh, typically even more often, as we see on the bottom part. So you have to m deal with these changes within your hardware and software and the different te technology cycles, and still verify that you have a solid foundation from which to build your overall system. So this is a very large challenge when, when we look at that uh, upgrade cycle and applying that and having that solid standard or foundation. And now I'll turn it over to Ken Erickson. Hello. Uh, so some of the primary challenges we have found with MOSA, verification and conformance, um, there's a large number of possible test configurations for hardware and software. 
that can lead to a you know quite a bit of, of needs for hardware and, and different software environments to, to test all those. Uh, there's a lack of comprehensive verification components environments. Looking at something like Host, there are you know basically Tucson Embedded Solution and one other uh, company that did a Cibber Phase Two Cibber as well. Uh, looking at things like SOSA, you know there aren't any yet, and and you know I think the two companies that did the servers are probably positioned well to to take that on, but even for SOSA that's a much bigger task than it has been for Host. Uh, things like custom program needs will often conflict with the technical standards and the requirements. There's a uh, lack or ease of access to test the test data and the conformance results. Those can be in you know, many different uh, programs, different hardware, things like that. It all has to be brought together and brought into one place. There's a you know, large number of incompatible tools used by different organizations and even within a single organization. One, one thing like uh, national instruments might be used, uh, could be in-house custom test results and things like that. All those things have to be brought together. There's uh, many times a mismatch of the tools to the standards. You know, the, the, the tooling may be written for general testing or something, and the standards have different requirements, and so they have to be customized in many cases. And then we've also run into uh, cases where the different editions and versions of the open standards conflict with each other or, or are different enough that the uh, components don't necessarily uh, conform to each other. So we've categorized some of these, all of these challenges into these five bullets. Essentially, uh, you know, ambiguous requirements really can lead to a lot of problems. The goal there is to kind of automate the processing of those requirements and understand them more through program programmatically. Uh, traceability is hugely important to, to determine your coverage for conformance. Something like the host standard, there's a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three. The uh, tier three is, is kind of the uh, specification for a component that has to trace back into the tier two. The tier two traces back into the tier one, and all three of those can trace up to you know dozens or, or 30 or 40 different uh, other standards like IEEE and PETA. There's the uh, tool chain differences that lead to many incompatibilities for verification and conformance. And then conflicting requirements of the different components. And then when you start bringing in requirements from electrical, mechanical, power, cooling, software, and integration from all these different disciplines, they all have to be brought together into, into a single tool, essentially, to, to really get the conformance you need for those. So now we move on to the uh, methods we've determined to mitigate some of these challenges for verification and conformance. We developed a uh, tool now, it's over 10 years in, in development, it's called Awesome, and that is our Mimosa approach. And it does things like clarify the uh, biggest requirements. We're looking at the EAR standard and we can kind of process and automate the processing of requirements so it requires less human interaction. We can leaflet requirements amongst the uh, different standards. We have full traceability from, and we bring all the documents into our awesome tooling. So we'll bring in a tier one, tier two, all the tier three standards. We'll import the IEEE reference standards, the VITA standards, POSIX, anything else, and then trace all of those requirements up to those and can develop tests against each of those requirements and determine you know, full coverage for conformance. The uh, Tooling also lets us centralize all the information we need, whether it's the requirements and even into things like design and, and test all into one place. And it also handles multi multidisciplinary technical data very well too. Some of the uh, projects we have succeeded on using Awesome for process and tool chain include the host Cibber. which we leveraged Awesome Mimosa to create an, a conformance test suite called Harmony, which is, is kind of a subset of Awesome's capabilities. It allows us to do uh, start to finish, finish management of conformance 
and the full traceability amongst all the uh, tier one, tier two, tier three standards and all the other standards. We're uh, following the face conformance twofold approach where there's a conformance verification matrix along with an automated test suite. And with the tooling, we bring all of that information together and can determine the conformance. It handles, like I mentioned before, the document management of all the different standards and all the references therein and the traceability to all those standards. As well as we have both internal and external test capabilities. We can integrate with external tooling. We have our own internal test capabilities, C, C++, Python, Java, any of those types of tests we can also integrate with. And just as an example, down there in the uh, metrics for our post conformance uh, server, we are looking at around almost 11,000 requirements. We brought in 57 documents. We built roughly 300 tests per device and tested six different cards. Another project that we've used awesome, and actually it's in progress, is the uh, Aviation Architecture Environment Exploitation Airborne Radio Control Management Software Application. This is going to be deployed on the UH-60M. We're going through full flight qualification. It's going to be DO-178 LC. We're using awesome for all the requirements, development, design, development, test, and all the traceability. It will be five units of conformance per phase verification and roughly 120,000 lines of slot. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, in conclusion, right? So, our, our big focus is making sure it's a holistic approach to conformance. And uh, the, the real key there is being able to pull in all your uh, requirements, uh, your reporting, uh, being able to, to manage your hardware requirements of different disciplines as well as software. So the real focus is making sure it's all conformant and integrated and, and is a complete solution. Uh, one of the real challenges, like we said, is when you have the different tool chains, it, it causes a real uh, issue in terms of managing it all, but that's not to say that we don't leverage that as well. There are different tools. We're able to access those and pull the data in. We have integrations, of course, with uh, doors and, and various requirements tools, we like RecIF, so we're able to pull all the requirements in. We import the documents in their uh, native format, Word or PDF. So we pull all those in, extract all those requirements, and really allows us to deconflict and manage all that detail. And that's one of the keys of the uh, awesome and the offshoot, which is Harmony for the conformance testing approach, is that it makes sure that we can uh, manage that entire process. And, and it's also a commercially available tool chain for others to be able to uh, utilize um, for this effort. I will say when you go to uh, hardware testing, the cost of the uh, hardware test stations can be uh, somewhat significant. So the key is to have just certain uh, labs most likely uh, to be able to do that kind of verification or development testing. Um, so ultimately, you know, tagline, uh, it, it is a feasible approach. We looked at this uh, very hard and we considered how to do, you know, from that soup to nuts, right? That holistic approach of managing these complex requirements of these different uh, disparate standards somewhat and, and how they can build each on each other as well as overlap. So it's really key to make sure it all works and, and really provide that solid foundation on which the systems can be built and as well verified. Uh, that is the end of our presentation. Okay, any questions? Okay, thanks. Um, there is one question I see here. Um, when you say how many process, you mean TES how many, not the IBM how many process, right? Correct, correct, uh, right. So, uh, Harmony is, is a uh, product solution uh, built uh, as part of the uh, awesome uh, test suite, or I mean, an awesome product suite, so it's awesome Harmony. Okay, one other question. Um, how do you handle versioning issues? If two systems implement different versions, or one, or one system wants to update its version, 
With the changed field names between the versions, they may lose their interoperability to each other. This implies that one system. Okay, um, that might have been the question from the previous. Oh, actually, so, yeah, I'll you're right. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, the, okay, the so. interesting thing, I, I'd, I'd like to throw it out there because this is actually something we uh, considered. We do have a, a server component or a cloud-based component as part of Awesome and Harmony that allows us to manage the uh, multi-vendors uh, and and multi multiple uh, card solutions as well as test suites and standards. So the idea is it has versioning built in within the uh, cloud database system. So, you know, in, in terms of all your requirements, uh, design, test cases, procedures, results, it's all built into the uh, tool and the process that goes along with it. Great, thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through. But um, folks, if you do have questions um, later on, please email it to us and we will definitely get back to you. And um, so thank you again, Ken. Great presentation. Thank you.